This is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because she's here with her Bravo, Bravo, Bravo sweatshirt and she means business, Miss Sarah Farasia. David Yontev, I, uh, we got so much to cover because isn't, is it just me, but I'm like obsessed with Vanderpump Rules now. These past couple episodes, now oh. I'm a fan for you or you out. But I'm sorry, last night was amazing. Do we have a bitter Betty on our hands or what? Miss Ariana. She ain't I, happy, is she, girl? She isn't happy. And why is nobody in this friend group asking her the one question? David, do you know the one question they need to be asking her to get to the bottom of this bitterness? Mm, are you happy with all your new money? Are you still in love with Sandoval? This is giving me, I am still in love. I am a woman scorned. I am in love. You have one upped me. How dare you? I still have feelings for you. I'm hurt and angry. I'm on the verge of tears. Is that, I mean, this is giving me, huh. how come everybody in this friend group has a bunch to say? I mean, they're drawing lines in the sand and Brock is telling her to back off and Lala's coming in. Is anyone <clears throat> coming to her with weapons down and just saying, girl, maybe we need to grieve more? Are Were we in love with Tom? I mean, this woman was crying out last night. That was her dream home they were in where she was going to raise her babies with Sandoval. This is a woman who looks at the man she was so in love with, even though I think he was checked out and the relationship was probably had major, major red flags. In her mind, this woman was so in love. I'm sorry, I have never seen a woman so hurt still on TV and no one asking her the real questions here. We're just telling her how she should act at this point. I'm sorry, is this good TV? I think this is good television. Listen, I think it is better than any housewife show other than Beverly Hills. I'm going to put mm -hmm. Beverly Hills up. Um, yeah, I, I'm okay with all of Housewives just being canceled. I'll be honest with you, except for uh, Beverly Hills. And I'm interested with Salt Lake coming back. I'm a little interested in Alexis uh, versus Shannon, but that'll last like two episodes and then I'll have my eyes wired shut. Um, I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of right there with you. Uh, look at you with a hard hitting journalistic questions. Um, this is why you worked on the Kane show. You know, when we hired you, and found you 45 years ago and plucked you out of obscurity. Just kidding. Everyone's going to say I'm obnoxious now. I said to everyone, stick with this, Sarah. She, she's on to something here. You are asking the hard-hitting journalistic questions. Um, uh, well, you were, I was a good I didn't, I didn't think to, I didn't think about this one. Um, by the way, you can take all the credit because you are an incredible friend and mentor. And I actually thought about you last night. I do my yeah. my gratitude list every day. And I said, oh I actually God. said, God, please do not let him die until he's like 80 something. Because I call, I don't think people realize this. I call you and I ask you advice on clients and when people trash me online and when, and, and you are such a great sounding board. And I think everyone should have a friend like you because you don't give a fuck. I, it's the most liberating thing to have a friend who calls me up and says, do this, do that, and fuck them all. And I'm thinking to myself, God, I love you. I love you. I'm so grateful for you. So you take all the credit for my career. Thank Listen, you for being here. And this is for everybody listening. When you are on your deathbed and you are looking around the room and there are four people in the room, I hope that you have lived an authentic life for yourself, not for the fucking three followers on fucking Instagram and for the three people extra on fucking TikTok. So I hope everyone realizes that your body will be a shell of what it is today and no one will be attractive and no one will look good when you are heading into your decline and planning for your death. Shannon Doherty just gave up, was giving uh, away all her stuff. I can't even- So that her me. mother, and by the way, did I tell you this? Someone said, oh, that's, I, I have a bone to pick with Shannon. I've been seeing her, you know, at the conventions. I wonder if I told her this and she stole my idea. No, I'm being sarcastic, but- I too have always said this, that I will be doing, I swear to you, when I am diagnosed with something, God knows what, if I don't have a tragic death, I am going to, I am such a OCD control freak. I will run my demise, like I run this business, and I will start like planning out disposing of things so that it's 
Listen, if anyone has had someone pass in their lives, there's a lot of work after someone leaves the earth. If you are like next of kin or there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into it, probate and this and assets and just, I'm going to start simplifying things myself. So there you go. Morbid thought of the day, but Shannon did this interview. And, and by the way, no, no offense to Tori Spelling because Tori already fucking hates me, but just coming up with a podcast called Misspelling and telling like your husband, Dean, that you're filing for divorce on air to me, to me, I understand Tori needs money. This seems like an inauthentic money grab because of Shannon's podcast. I really have to say that, that let's be clear is a, is in the news all the time. It is like, it's very authentic. I mean, Shannon is not trying to get clicks regarding her death. I mean, she's also interviewing Brian Austin Green and Jason Priestley and like, you know, Holly Marie Combs. And I'm sure Rose McGowan is coming up. She just said like Shannon's interviewing actual celebrities and talking about 90210 and Charmed and like, but it's, she's not looking for clicks. She's really dealing with a woman staring down the barrel of death. She could have a long time to go. You know, she's oh, doing I'm well. Praying. Me I'm too. Praying. I'm just saying misspelling seems like a whole money grab because of Shannon's success. And it's not the same and it doesn't feel authentic to me. It, I, I uh, preach. I couldn't agree more when I saw that and her playing a voice message of Dean McDermott and them arguing. And I just thought, oh my God, this is so uh, that and Lizzo, Lizzo's stupid post. I quit, I quit, and thousands of messages come back, come back. We love you. And then, of course, two days later, in a, you know, oh, and, and how she didn't sign up for people being so critical of her body and all this stuff. And so then two days later, in a bathing suit that her areolas are two seconds away from coming out and saying hi, she's like, oh, I didn't mean that I quit music and what I love. I just quit caring what people think. Oh, you're so full of shit. This is so for clicks. And Tori's the same way. And the, re the clips that Tori releases, she's in her bed and she's like... Oh yeah, do I do I destroy relationships? Yes. And it's so I, I couldn't agree with you more. What a money grab. She already has a podcast with Jenny Garth that has actually had quite a bit of success. I, I don't even know what's called. 90210. It's, it's a replay. I, I think, think it's 90210 oh gosh or something. Yeah, 90210 oh gosh. And um it just I, I thought what a desperate, you know, they all do this basically because like they don't want to be interviewed they want to get all the clicks and money themselves which is fine i think that's like great but i there is something inauthentic about it 110 it's Feels such a money way, grab yeah. and but I, to your point she probably does need the money you know she probably does need the money so i guess what better way to do it but i just have zero interest